So hey guys, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're going to be talking about bringing back natural hair stylists. So this is stemming from a post that I came across on Facebook and I thought it was very interesting. Do y'all ever have those moments where you're thinking about something and then a few days later you see a relevant post on social media and you're like, wow, this is very full circle. So literally the other day I was talking about how a lot of hairstylists only know how to do lace frontals or lace wig installations and the average hairstylist these days isn't really offering a lot of natural hair care whatsoever. So I came across this post on Facebook and it says, bring back the stylists that wash and grow hair. These new stylists just lay lace. And then what was also very interesting was one of the follow-up comments. So another Facebook user commented and said, I swear, I'm so sick of these lazy ass, non-refundable deposit required. Hair must be washed, detangled, braided, and trimmed. I charge extra if your hair is past shoulder length. $20 late fee after five minutes, but wait 30 minutes for me to show up with no discount because I'm a human ass stylist. I'm about to do my own hair. Now, I think this post is honestly very true. And I'm someone who honestly loves lace wigs. I love lace closures, lace installations. I learned how to work with lace closures and lace frontals when I was in high school and then just started kind of perfecting it through the years, just learning from YouTube and trial and error and so be it. I definitely think YouTube and social media has been such a great learning tool for a lot of women, whether you're into natural hair or hair extensions or hair weaves. And as much as I will always advocate for doing what you want with your hair, being versatile and wearing hair extensions natural hair, pieces, ponytails, whatever you want. I definitely think there's some accuracy with this post. So I broke this video down into two main talking points. So let's get right into this video. So point number one is why has this happened? Why have we gotten to a point where you go to a beauty supply store or a beauty salon, you go on the internet, you don't see natural hair or natural hairstylists in abundance. Now this post isn't a post about whether natural hair is better than wearing wigs or weaves. Please do not start that conversation in the comments because that's not what this is about. This post is saying that we don't have a lot of hair professionals that can do both or at the very least can emphasize your real natural hair versus being very talented and giving you a wig or a lace installation. And I think what has happened is social media took over. There's a lot of social media hairstylists and I think it's good and bad. Like it's yin and yang. On one hand, it's good that we have another learning tool so you can learn from stylists all over the world. You can see the sped up one minute version on how to make a lace wig or a lace install. So for the girls who wouldn't know how or don't have anybody to teach them or or are limited on resources, they have an outlet where they can learn how to make themselves look a certain way. On the other hand, it's now been a surplus of the lace wig trend or lace wig desire, which has now resulted in a lot of stylists opting for that specialty in doing hair versus knowing how to actually care for natural hair. I like how the post says, bring back the stylists who wash and grow hair. And I think that's really the issue. A lot of stylists are now neglecting the basics that actually keep your client's hair healthy. Knowing how to wash it, detangle it, style, what products to use, how to grow hair, which styles will protect the hair. All of that is being thrown out the window or at least put on the back burner. And we're being told that we have to do a lot of that either at home or you have to pay extra to go to a stylist that specializes in that before you can even go and get a lace installation. And I was literally just talking about this the other day about how I don't know any hairstylist that can do natural hair as well as install a lace frontal. I would rather go to one hairstylist that can do both versus me having to do all the natural hair prep for them to just to slap a wig on my head. And I'm not downplaying lace installations because to me, it's a work of art. I love hair. And I think a lot of people try to make an argument about wigs that is based in negativity and inability to acknowledge a woman's choice to be versatile. But I do agree that we are hitting the turning point of where most stylists don't know how to care for natural hair. The second half of this post was the comment from the second Facebook user. And she basically stated all of the problems that are wrong with hairstylists today. A lot of them are lazy, money hungry, and want you to do a lot of the work before you come to to their chair and they're asking for a lot of money. I tried to get a quick weave the other day and this girl told me $120. As I'm editing this video, I realized I misspoke, but she actually told me $180. I know crazy. And I was like, as much as I can afford that, I don't think there's a quick weave in the world that is worth more than $100 to me. For you to glue tracks onto a cap and either sew down the closure for a quick weave or use leave out for a quick weave, I'm not paying more than $100 for that. Hey, that's just me. The hair is glued in. It's not going to last more than two weeks, especially when at home I washed my hair. I detangled my hair. I conditioned my hair. I blow dried my hair. I trimmed my hair. And then I made sure that it stayed in a stretched state before I came to your chair by not getting it wet or using other products. And 
and the whole nine yards. So if I'm doing half of the service before I even come to your chair, just for you to put a cap on my head and glue down some tracks, you're bugging for asking me for more than $100. That's just me personally. And I'm gonna make a separate video about how I feel as though there's some issues with a lot of business owners, especially black business owners raising their prices just because we're in this get a bag culture. I have a lot to say about that and I will make another video, but I do find it very crazy that a lot of stylists are charging a lot of money when they know good and well that the client did half of the work at home. What am I paying you for when my natural hair is more important than whatever wig, track, closure, whatever we plan to install on my head? The foundation of my hair is going to be my real hair and you have to be able to maintain that as a stylist. Not to mention, like the post said, all of these extra features that they're including to make it seem like they're professional. I'm tired of the non-refundable deposit circumstances where somebody sends you a deposit and has to either change their appointment date or time and it's all of this discrepancy on doing that because of the deposit. I think a lot of people want to make quick money and fast money and will try to make it seem like they love what they're doing for the money. But if you truly love what you're doing and you're passionate about it, the money is important, but it's not everything. What type of era are we living in where we have stylists that are charging extra if your hair is long or if your hair is not fully detangled? If you're not licensed, just say that, like, please. And that's what I would like them to tell me because honestly, as a professional, you should want to make sure that the integrity of your client's hair is healthy enough for whatever style they are requesting. So I don't understand why someone wouldn't want to look at their client's hair, wash it, test it, make sure it's strong before you do whatever you do. Because if we're being real, putting a lace frontal on somebody's hairline is risky if it's done incorrectly. You could rip out their edges, you can cause permanent damage, it can be too tight. There's a lot that can happen when you're adding some form of extensions or a piece to somebody's head. So you should want to make sure that their natural hair can fathom that before anything. And another thing, what's up with the whole, it's a $20 late fee after 15 minutes, this, that, and the third, but I've come on time to appointments and had to wait however long for somebody to be ready for me with no discount, even though my time is also important to me. And then there's stylists who don't even contact you to let you know that they're running behind or whatever may be going on, but they expect you to abide by their policies, which is very copy and paste. Like I've been noticing every lash tech, every nail tech, hairstylist, whatever, each time I go to their website or their booking link, it really just looks the same as everybody else now. Like everyone got these outlandish ideas and they think that they can just apply them because someone else is doing it. No, have some integrity for your brand and what you do. If you're passionate about hair, make sure that you care about the hair that is on the client as well as whatever you're going to be adding to it. Now, the second and final point is the solution. I'm very solution based and I kind of think outside the box when it comes to certain things. I think the solution is going to come from either the board and legal requirements and what it takes for one to be a certified hairstylist. When you're going to someone who is unlicensed, in a sense, you're proceeding at your own risk. So you can see that their work is probably good, but until you are educated on how to really do hair, you're still a novice to me. You're still an amateur to me. You're still somebody who is in learning mode. And I have a friend who is in cosmetology school who is graduating soon, and she's been in school for a little while, definitely over a year. And the amount of things that she has to learn, like what colors mix together correctly, how to lighten hair, there's a lot it takes to be a licensed beauty professional. And I think there's a lot of internet stylists that are diminishing what it means to be a licensed beauty professional. And I know for a fact there are hairstylists that are out there who are very offended or irritated or get a bad rep because there are so many Instagram stylists with no credentials or even if they do have credentials they only specialize in one thing which is usually just slapping a closure on somebody's head not following braiding technique not washing the client's hair not doing a whole bunch of things that are necessary to maintain the integrity of a client's head so I do challenge a lot of the legalities or whatever legislature is in place for beauty professionals to have a tighter grip on the way how business is carried out of course you can be an independent contractor per se and not work in a salon and just have your own thing going on. Trust me, sometimes the best hairstyles I've gotten was in somebody's living room. But across the board, I would also suggest that people learn to do their own hair. That has saved me a lot of money, time, disappointment, you name it, just from learning how to do my own hair. Of course, I'm not going to be as good as a professional, but I think I've been able to learn enough where I can make myself look decent and presentable to my standard and not have to worry about the weird or sketchy business practices of many stylists, as well as stylists who don't really know how to do more than I can do just from learning on YouTube throughout the years. I'm really interested to see what my licensed hairstylists have to think and I want to know if y'all feel any discrepancies in the way how the beauty world as it relates to hairstyling has transformed over the last few years because I think this post was very relevant and very needed to express in the current state of urban or black hairstyling. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. As you all know my song Ballin' is getting ready to drop. I know y'all was messing with it but we also have the live performance video up on YouTube. I will pin that in the comment section down below. Please go watch and comment and let me know what you think. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social
social media networks and i will see you all in my next video bye guys they say my drip is so much they had to get a couple ponchos right now i'm getting chips and they nacho i'm a time for pockets full i'm minus six no toronto uh -huh. i knock you down like dominoes then dip on y'all like bomb i'm the one one i'm too much trifecta i'm three much yeah. full play eat a nigga up like it's free no, lunch not. toupee i stay on your head like a wee bomb uh -huh. the whole city gonna know what we want they do what i say but my name is not simon uh -huh. fly like an eagle jason peters i'm the lineman really? on fire like the amazon but i ain't in my prime yet on fire like the amazon but i ain't in my prime and now i'm